Hello, my name is Alex Sambelashvili. I'm a principal scientist at Medtronic's Cardiac Rhythm and Disease Management Unit. For the last six or seven years, I've been working on the problem of CRT response, trying to improve response to CRT therapy. One of the ways is to use device algorithms. So over the past five years, I've been working hard on the adaptive CRT algorithm, which tailors CRT to patients' heart rhythm. Well, let's first go over the rationale behind the adaptive CRT algorithm. Why did we create it? Adaptive CRT algorithm, in my mind, belongs to the category of physiologic pacing algorithms, like Reddit response or MVP. In fact, it's quite similar to MVP in regards of reducing unnecessary right ventricular pacing. So if we think about CRT, it's really a therapy for left bundle branch block. And now we have more evidence that left bundle branch block patients are the ones who benefit from CRT the most. In left bundle branch, right ventricular conduction can be quite preserved, and it's preserved in a significant proportion of patients. So why are we pacing the right ventricle? Wouldn't it make more sense to pace only the left ventricle where the problem exists? And that was the basis behind the adaptive CRT algorithm. We wanted to avoid unnecessary right ventricular pacing. Now this animation illustrates what I'm talking about. Conduction down the right bundle is preserved. We pace only the left ventricle, but we pre-pace to fuse the wavefront coming from pacing with the conduction coming down the right bundle. So we're creating resynchronization effect with pacing on the left side and natural conduction on the right side. This concept was patented by Medtronic back in 2004. We can do it in a device. We could just measure conduction from the right atrium to the right ventricle, and if it's normal, pace the left ventricle only and synchronize with native conduction. However, if a patient has left bundle branch block, but in addition, delayed conduction on the right side, AV block, then we would pace both ventricles. And when we pace both ventricles, there is one refinement that we introduced. We try to pace after the end of the P wave. So this algorithm is dynamic. It works in the device, measures conduction every minute, and adjusts pacing according to this logic. Now the research that allowed us to create this algorithm is not new. It goes back to the early days of CRT when groups of scientists compared left ventricular free wall pacing to biventricular pacing. And they found that in patients who have normally preserved conduction, AV nodal conduction, left ventricular pacing actually turned out to be superior. And they even hypothesized why, that this was due to the fusion between the pace conduction and recruitment of the intrinsic conduction. So it's both native conduction and pace conduction contributing to the better activation and better excitation of the left ventricle. And this hypothesis was further tested by Dutch investigators who looked at left ventricular pacing without fusion at short AV delays and with fusion at longer AV delays and they saw that when it was with fusion, left ventricular only pacing was better than biventricular pacing. Medtronic conducted our own studies to verify their findings, but also to look at the right ventricular function. What we found in our studies is that if a patient has relatively preserved conduction on the right side and we don't pace it, then right ventricular function is better. So left ventricular only pacing with fusion would produce better right ventricular function compared to biventricular pacing. In some patients, conduction on the right side is disrupted, is delayed, and they require biventricular pacing. So how would we know when to pace the ventricles? What is the right AV timing? And we did another study addressing this exact question, and that study showed that if we want to optimize AV timing, if we want to optimize left ventricular feeling, from the echocardiography, then we need to pace ventricles after the end of the P wave. It's a very physiologic idea. 
which provides a very good approximation for echocardiographic optimization, which is burdensome and time consuming. One could just look at the width of the P wave and adjust pacing to pace after the end of the P wave. So this was the foundation for AV adaptation during biventricular pacing, which also can be provided by the adaptive CRT algorithm. So in the next section, I'll go more into the detail behind the algorithm construction.